Leave the cell and go down a couple screens, then head right where you get here. Pass a couple more screens and head up. Once you get into this open area, you'll get a call from an unknown source who says that he's one of your fans, telling you that you're about to enter a minefield. Equip the mine detector so you can see where all the mines are and crawl around to pick them up. Grab all of them. You're gonna need them soon. Once you got them all, go back down and right. And if you take this upper path, you'll find a kid wandering around at the edge of the swampy waters. You'll see a lot of these children throughout the game. They're war orphans who have been taken in by the troops of Zanzibar land. They'll often give you helpful information and sometimes their info is useless as shit. This kid says that the swamp is dangerous because you'll drown in it, even though a truck drove over it. Well, he's right. You can drown if you step into the spot where the land sinks and you don't climb back up in time. But if you walk on the shallow portions, you'll be able to get across. Unfortunately, you can't eyeball which spots are safe, so there'll be a lot of trial and error here. You'll eventually get to this little chunk of land with a kid occupying it. He tells you trucks come in and out of here all the time. That's amazing because I can barely walk on this shit without sinking. Keep heading up and you'll arrive at this cell. Kill the guard that's watching over it and use the level 2 card to get in. Use the level 1 card on the door up here and you'll encounter the next boss, Running Man. He claims to be the fastest mercenary in the world and then insists on proving it by going for a little run, even though you can't even fucking see him unless you look at the radar. So he turns on the nerve gas which fills the area and starts running away like a pussy. You have to kill him before the gas kills you, all he's gonna do is run. So put on the gas mask to slow down the gas's effect on you. If you try to chase him down, you'll have absolutely no chance. You'll be lucky if you can catch a glimpse of him. The only way to take him out is to set up landmines. Now this area consists of four screens that go in a circle. So your best bet is to lay the mines out in the narrow corridor where you know he has to walk on. You're gonna want to use these on at least three of the screens, maybe four to make it in time. Just remember where you left the mines in case he runs around some of them or you'll get hurt too. After you finish him off, you'll have a little conversation as he's dying. He'll explode and then you can grab the level 3 card. Go back down and use the newly acquired level 3 card on this door that you passed earlier. Two kids are wandering around in the small room. The little girl says that she hates men with guns and the boy says that there were a lot of missiles here earlier and they got moved to the west side of the first floor of the factory or the Zanzibar building. Go back there through the jungle and head around to the perimeter to the southern door and use the level 3 card to get in. Head to the right quickly so the camera on the left doesn't pick you up. Make your way down a few screens, be careful when killing the guards, and when you get to the bottom, grab the ammo on the right side. And then use the level 3 card on this door to get the stinger missiles. Head back to the main entrance to the jungle and head right. Take out the guard and use the level 2 card to get through this door. Take out the guard and head right. Carefully take this guard out and use the level 3 card to get in. You get the red ID card, which is basically a condensed version of cards 1 through 3, which will make things easier than switching back and forth. You don't actually need to get this, but it does make things easier. So now go back to the jungle and head back to the minefield, which is loaded with mines again. So grab the mine detector and crawl over the mines, or just walk around them. When you get here, Holly will call you up and tell you that the sand you're walking on is specially imported or some shit, and it'll squeak when you walk on it. So you don't want to move around too much, or they'll hear you and get all curious. They won't necessarily give you away. You could actually use this to bait them over and take them out. Or you can crawl so they don't hear you, just as long as you don't cross their line of sight. Either way, go into the truck on the left to get some ammo, and then the truck on the right to get a ration. You'll pass another screen where you'll have to carefully take out the guards because of the squeaky sand. Then head right and then north and crawl into this vent to get some ammo. Go left and get ready because you're about to do battle with a fucking hind D chopper. You can use the four screens that are joined in this battle, much like when you took on Running Man. It'll fly overhead in a counterclockwise rotation, and when you see the shadow, it'll stop firing. Your best bet is to run ahead of it and wait for it. Equip the Stinger missiles and use the radar to aim it. You can't move while you have it equipped, so after you fire, switch off to another weapon so you can run again. Now, the hind can only hurt you if the shadow is on screen, but you can actually hit it while it's on another screen if you aim it well, but that's easier said than done. My suggestion is to give yourself some space and line up your shot to the spot where he'll be coming back out and shoot before he gets there for timing purposes. Study its pattern first to get a good idea of where it'll be each time it goes around. After you destroy it, head north and you'll find yourself in front of the tower building. You can't get in through the door here yet, so take out the guard, head right, and Campbell calls you to suggest using the cardboard box as a disguise and that his frequency has changed, I guess as a security measure. 
Hop into this truck, grab the box, and take out the guards. And equip the cardboard box by this conveyor belt, and it'll take you into the tower building. Head north, and Holly will call you to unfortunately report that she's been caught. She says she's in the tower building somewhere where there's an elevator to the left, a pump-like noise from the right, and water streaming in front and behind. Crawl under this vent to grab the rations, and when you sneak up to kill this guard, keep in mind that the floor here will tip him off if you walk on it, so kill him first. Skip the first few doors and elevators, keep your eye on the radar for any guards, and once you get to the second elevator, go in and head down to the first floor basement, which leads to the shit storage facility. Use the red card on these doors here to get some rations and plastic explosives. Along the way, this kid will pass by you asking if you're a friend of the blonde girl. Keep moving and use the red card on this door and this little girl will tell you that her one-eyed uncle told her to tell the man in green that the girl isn't here. So evidently this chick is colorblind and now you know Holly really is here. The next room appears to be a dead end, although you can hear some kind of noise, and the radar shows two rooms on either side. This should be the pump-like noise Holly was talking about, and when you punch the wall on the right over here, it sounds different. So equip your plastic explosive and blow the wall to hell. You'll rescue Holly, who informs you that Dr. Marv is safe, but his whereabouts are unknown. However, he did send a clue attached to a carrier pigeon which unfortunately escaped up the elevator shaft and is potentially up on the rooftop. But other guards are going to be searching for it too, so your next mission is to find a pigeon. She changes her frequency to 140.76, gives you ID card 4, and decides to head off to collect information while you find the pigeon. Go back to the first floor and head back to this elevator that you skipped earlier and take it up to the 10th floor. The little kid will tell you that the walls have been buried, but if you punch the walls you can hear where they used to be. Punch here to hear that sound and blow it up with a plastic explosive. This next kid says there are green pineapples in a room south of here. So punch the southern wall right about here and blow that shit up too. Keep going, blow up this wall as well. And this kid will tell you about the cycloptic uncle that's like a father to the kids, but hates adults. So did Michael Jackson lose an eye and build this fortress? Anyway, use the red card on this door to get some rations, plastic explosives, and ammo. Go back, head west, and open this door with a level 4 card to get the green pineapples that kid was talking about, aka grenades. Now go back to the first floor, skip past the elevator you took last time until you get to this third elevator. But be sure to grab some rations that are hidden in this vent first. Take the elevator all the freaking way up to the 13th floor and you'll be caught in a wire trap crafted by this fucktard crawling along the ceiling named Red Blaster, who promises to cook you with his grenades. He'll crawl back and forth chucking grenades at you, so you're gonna fight fire with fire and use grenades on him. First cut the wires by walking into them for a couple seconds each to give yourself some room. Then sneak up each side when he's on his way, throw the grenade so he crawls right into it, and then run back right as you throw your grenade, and his will never catch up to you. You could cut the wires on this side and fight him on two different screens, but there's really no point, and keeping it on one screen makes this battle go by much faster. If you're good with timing, you can take him out without getting hit once. After taking him out, go through the door down here, go up the staircase, and you'll come to a dead end. But Holly calls to inform you that the entrance here was sealed off, but you can blow it up no problem. So blow it up no problem. You'll be on the rooftop where the carrier pigeon will be flying around. Trying to chase it down is like Rocky Balboa trying to chase the chicken. It just won't happen. So if you call up the animal expert, Joseph Norton, he'll tell you that you can lure it if you have peas or potatoes. Now that's the kind of food that you'll find in the B2 form of rations, so equip those, give the pigeon some space to land, and when it does, walk over to it and read the message which says, Help, Wiz, Ohio. What the fuck? McDonald Miller will tell you that the letters have a digital translation to numbers, so you're supposed to figure out that it translates to 140.51. Call that frequency and Dr. Marv answers, but he speaks to you in another language so Snake doesn't understand a fucking word he's saying. So call up Petrovich, who tells you Marv only speaks Czech and Slavic, and recommends Natasha, the STB woman that escorts him, to help translate. Petrovich tells you that she doesn't have a transceiver, but is undercover in an enemy uniform in this building, and suggests to look in the ladies' room. The building he's referring to is the Zanzibar building, because that's the building he's in, so you're going to have to go back. As a shortcut, use the level 4 card on this door down here to get back outside. Don't forget about the squeaky sand in the minefield. 